folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. We have been flooded this week and last week with bird stories. Birds dropping from the sky, falling down everywhere. Even in our county, there was a sighting on a highway that's just not too far from my house of about 50 dead birds laying all over the place. Various conservation experts were brought in. People have examined the birds. Nobody knows really what's going on, but there's been a lot of theories out there concerning what is behind all of the birds dropping. People have speculated that maybe harp had something to do with it. You know, this big of an antenna array that they have up in Alaska and other places, you know, shooting deadly rays up into the sky and the birds are going, ah! I mean, I don't know. Some have speculated that uh, these ran into invisible UFOs and they just, boom, and they dropped dead from the sky. And then we're talking about a significant number of birds all over the world just dropping dead for some reason. Why is this happening? And there's been, been a lot of theories out there. One of the latest, I think, um, is pretty interesting. There's a theory out there. Really, right now, all we have is theories. There's a theory out there that says that all of these birds were part of a suicide cult. And they all committed suicide. And the leader of this cult happens to be someone they refer to as the Big Bird. We don't know. Maybe that... I don't know why the birds are dropping from the sky. I mean, I really don't. I've been looking at the same stories you have, looking at the same theories you have. The truth is, we don't know. We can guess, we can speculate, but I would rather know than not know. And I believe that at some point it's going to become clear if this is anything. I mean, you know, sometimes there just is happenings like this. And we know that it's all part of God's governance over the universe and His governance over the earth and the affairs of mankind as well. And we're going to be dealing with that here in a little bit because when you, when you reject God, all sorts of very bad, creepy things happen. This is what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to talk about, I've got a story here uh, dealing with the Roman Catholic Church. And then, then I'm going to talk about Jared Loeffner, the man who shot a congresswoman, a federal judge, and about five other people. It actually uh, ends up being about 18, 20 other people, either dead or injured from this man. We're going to, we're going to look at some issues here dealing with Jared Loeffner. And possibly, in my opinion, probably, why he did what he did. But let's look at this first story here very quickly, and I want to move on. There is an article that came out this week. Prominent priest says Catholic Church, quote, full of gay priests. Miami's most famous former Catholic priest, Father Alberto Cute, is blasting the church, saying there are gay priests at, quote, all levels. And that the church would never be able to function without them. Stop, stop and think about what he's saying. What he's saying is, is that he is admitting... Now this is from a guy who um, was a Catholic priest and fell in love with a woman. In fact, he got caught with her. So he decided, you know what, hey, I love this woman more than anything and I'm going to marry this woman. And you know what... Let me deal with this issue of Roman Catholic celibacy. There is nothing, there is nothing in this Bible that declares that God's men, like me and others, pastors, preachers, and so on, that declares that they have, a, have to live a celibate life. There's nothing in that. Celibacy is a form of bondage, and it's a burden that's placed upon these Roman Catholic priests. They're taught this from birth. They're taught this at such a young age that if they become a priest, all of a sudden God endows them with this special or unique ability that they have that they never want a woman the rest of their life or they never have to marry or they never have these little primal urges that everybody else has. It's not true. That doesn't happen. We have speculated and known for thousands of years that this idea of celibacy in the Roman Catholic system, it has never worked, it never will work, and it places an undue burden upon men who, I believe some of these men, really at one point in their life, really wanted to serve God and thought that that's what they were doing. And the Roman Catholic system put this saying on them that they could not bear and they could not contain. And what it, and what it did was it opened the door 
for massive immorality. So here's what this priest is saying. He is saying that this homosexuality deal runs so high and so rampant in the Roman Catholic system that, in fact, let me read the rest of what he said. You'll get it. Uh, this priest who was forced out of the diocese of Miami after photo surface showing the priest kissing his then girlfriend, they're now married with a baby daughter, has written a book called Dilemma, A Priest Struggle with Faith and Love, which was released today. According to the My Miami Herald, uh, QT writes that the church's insistence on celibacy has led directly to the sex abuse scandals and ever smaller numbers of new priests. He says church leaders are hypocrites who knowingly accept both heterosexual and homosexual relationships but attack them when they become public. He said there are so many homosexuals, both active and celibate, at all levels of clergy and church hierarchy that the church would never be able to function if they were really to exclude all of them from ministry. So here's what he's saying. He's saying if we went after every Roman Catholic priest that was either had a heterosexual or homosexual involvement of some kind during their priesthood, wouldn't have, wouldn't have any priests left. Wouldn't have any, uh, wouldn't have any cardinals left. Wouldn't have any bishops left. Wouldn't have any monsignors left. Wouldn't have any monks left. We, we wouldn't have any nuns left. Uh, and undoubtedly, we wouldn't have any popes. The simple fact of the matter is that the Roman Catholic system is so far removed from the Bible and from the truthfulness of the scriptures they have even if even if even if you think that at one time the Roman Catholic system was right they have over the years and it didn't take long for them to become the most corrupt vile sinful organization in the entire world and most of everything that they do is a massive cover up Priests and nuns. I, I listened to you. You got to get a copy of this, and I, maybe we can uh, make it available through our ministry if I can find it again. Somebody sent me the testimony of a woman by the name of Sister Charlotte, who was a Roman Catholic nun. She was shipped over into into Europe somewhere. And basically, she was put into a cloistered convent, which basically is, once these young girls come into this convent, they never have any contact with the outside world. Hmm, I wonder why. And she said, very, right, off, right off the bat, from the very beginning, she realized what her role was in this convent. It was to play the bride for the men in the church who were playing the bridegroom. That was her role. She escaped. She told her testimony. Nobody knows where she is now. Let's look at the scriptures. These people all worship the same God. It's not the God that you and I believe in. It's not the God of this Bible. It's a God S. They worship a queen over their religion. Jeremiah 7.18, the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes, that's the uh, Eucharist, by the way, to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that's the uh, Roman Catholic Mass, with all the little gods, the saints in there, uh, that they may provoke me to anger. God said that all your idols in your churches and your worship and adoration of the Queen of Heaven, you make me angry. You make me very mad when you do these things. And the Roman Catholic system is built upon this idea that Mary is a goddess. She is the co-redemptrix, or the one who really is responsible for redeeming mankind. Since, you know, she's the one that gave birth to God. They call her the mother of God. They call her the queen of heaven. And really all this idol worship of her, with her crown on, holding her little baby. She's Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I read this story, and this is the first verse that jumped into my mind. Revelation 18. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Notice the emphasis here. Of they have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Notice that her spirit 
Her very essence is about sexual relationships that are not sanctioned by God through marriage. That is the essence of her spirit. So the Catholic, this this one Catholic priest comes out and says, "Yeah, there's like gays and all these other kinds of people in the Roman Catholic Church. They were like full of it." Okay, I got caught, and they don't like me now, but the truth of it is, they all know that it's going on. The spirit that's driving this is the spirit of the Roman Catholic Church. Jude chapter 1 verse 7, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Now I'm going to stop right here. Because Jude is not just talking about the sin of homosexuality when he's referring to Sodom and Gomorrah. He's talking about the whole gamut of sexual immorality, not just sodomy. And so when he uses this word fornication, and I'll tell you, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that America is really, really, really close to being Sodom. We're like, really? We're almost there. We almost got it. Okay? Will the judgment of God that he gave to Sodom appear in the United States of America? Probably so at some point. Is it going to happen in the Vatican? Look what he says. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God is saying here through Jude that Sodom and Gomorrah was an example. An example to the United States of America. An example to Rome. That if God judged them for their fornication, God will judge Rome. God will judge America. God will judge the nations of this world for drinking of that same spirit. Now back to Revelation chapter 18. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. And shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord who judgeth her. And I just I don't know, this just came out to me this week, and I thought, you know what, I am going to deal with this. Because any place where the spirit of Sodom or the spirit of Mystery Babylon the Great is allowed to thrive and exist, you know, first of all, there's always a cover up. There's always a big cover up. Okay? But I'm telling you, at some point, God's going to judge Rome. And God's going to judge America. You know, people ask me, Hey, Pastor Mike, who, who do you think Babylon is? Who, I mean, who, is, it, is it New York City? I mean, is it Las Vegas? Is it, is it Washington, D.C.? Is it the Vatican? And I always say, yeah, it is. Any place where her spirit is allowed to thrive. And I'll say this. How about in your home? How about in churches? where her spirit is allowed to thrive and exist, that's Babylon, right there, in danger of God's judgment. Speaking of God's judgment, Jared Lee Loeffner, last Saturday, took a, what was it, a 9mm with a uh, 33 round clip. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. Took a 9mm gun, Went to a Safeway grocery store in Arizona, shot a congresswoman, a bunch of other people, federal judge. And I've had a lot of theories thrown at me this week, and, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I look for I look for patterns, I look for things, I look for to see what's going on. I mean, we all want answers as to why something like this could ever happen in our country. We want answers, and I believe the Bible provides those answers. One of the theories that uh, came out this week was was that uh, this federal judge had just ruled against the Obama administration for some lawsuit that was filed on behalf of so-and-so, and and there was $300,000 at stake, and this and that and the other, and that a possible motive, they didn't say the possible motive now for the shooting was this federal judge ruled against the Obama administration. Let me say this, I can tell you that the Obama administration probably should be used to by now judges ruling against them because I mean they've been doing a lot of things that just aren't right according to the Constitution okay so was that a motive and, and what they're saying is is that Jared Loeffner the shooter uh, was a trained government assassin 
mind-controlled assassin. You know, the whole Manchurian candidate thing, that he was part of a CIA mind control program and they got him and they controlled his mind and on such and such a date they triggered him and he went and he shot the judge that ruled against... I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think that's what it was. Okay. Um, others, you know, like I said, others speculate the whole mind control thing, and on and on and on. But we want to know why. We want to know why a guy who goes and shoots all these people deliberately has it in his mind that he's going to shoot at least this one woman, and then just start just throwing bullets everywhere, including, including a nine-year-old girl. Now you saw her picture. Beautiful, beautiful young lady full of hope and life and energy and full of, full of a promise of a future who was born on September 11, 2001 after the, the day's events, the, the massacre that happened on that day in our country, the, the carnage, the fire, the death of almost 3,000 people on that day. And here a mom and dad delivers a little girl in Tucson, Arizona that represents hope, represents something beautiful that was a replacement for the scar of September 11, 2001. And now she lies dead. What a, what a terrible, terrible thing this was. Our hearts and our prayers go out and should go out to the congresswoman to the family, to the, to the man. I, and I don't know all these names, but I watched the stories this week. The, uh, the, the man who, when he heard the gunshots ringing out and saw the people falling, he ran to his wife to guard her from being shot, from being killed. And it cost him his life. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. This man and this woman, that had been married, I think, about ten years, something like that. She was his best friend. And he laid down his life willingly for her. It was his first thought, his first instinct. Got to protect my wife. And he gave his life for the cause of his wife. I, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I see a gospel story in that. Now I'm going to get to the bad stuff here in a little bit. But I think we ought to pray for these families. Pray for this family lost this little girl. Pray for these people that are still hurting. Pray for this congresswoman. Did you know she voted for health care? All the more reason why to pray for her. The Bible says bless your enemies and pray for them. It didn't say shoot them. By the way, I'm going to throw this in here because I really don't like these people. Westboro Baptist Church. And if you don't know anything about them, Google that. They're in Topeka, Kansas. They're probably the most idiotic unchristian people that I've ever heard of in my life. They come to the St. Louis area all the time. Every time a soldier comes home to be buried from fighting the war, they protest it and said, God hates fags and God hates all the soldiers. And they're pretty, they're pretty, um, I don't like these people. They plan on showing up at some of these funerals. I hope that they don't. And I hope that unchristian people out there don't think that that's who we are because we're not. These people say, well, we're sticking to the Bible. Listen, the Bible has nothing to do with what it is they're doing. And maybe I'll deal with them at some point in the future. But I'm telling you, as Christians, we pray for our enemies. We pray for the people that have fallen and have died. We pray for their families. We pray for those that are still hurting. We pray for them because I did a little research into Jared Loeffner and I think I get it. I think I get why he did what he did. And let me just, let me quit rambling here. Let's get into uh, the stories. Uh, Gabrielle Gifford's shooting. This was the congresswoman. Frightening twisted shrine in Arizona killer Jared Lee Lofter's yard. A sinister shrine reveals a chilling occult dimension in the mind of the deranged gunman accused of shooting a member of Congress and 19 others. Hidden within a camouflage tent behind Jared Lee Lofter's home sits an alarming altar with a skull sitting atop a pot filled, filled with shriveled oranges. A row of ceremonial candles and a bag of potting soil lay nearby, photos reveal. Now, 
There's been some speculation as to what this altar was, okay? Some say it was just the leftover remnants of a Halloween thing, you know, and he, you know, just left it there and didn't do anything with it. Others say that because of his actions and his activities that they speculate there was something of an occult nature going on. Later on, the article says, experts on Sunday said the elements are featured in the ceremonies of a number of occult groups. Investigators have focused on Loeffner's online anti-government ramblings as the chief motivation for the shooting Saturday of U.S. Representative Gabrielle Giffords. I don't think that had anything to do with it. The discovery of the shrine raises the possibility that Loeffner, 22, may have been driven by other forces. Students and faculty at Pima Community College, which he attended until his suspension last summer, said Loeffner was clearly at odds with the world. Here is another one. Uh, FBI investigators delving into the warped mind of Tucson Massacre suspect Jared Loeffner are exploring whether he was influenced by the occult and a right-wing conspiracy theorist. Now I want to stop right here because you and I both know that as soon as this happened, all of the, I mean all of the left-wingers come out and said, see, he's been listening to talk radio. He's been listening to the to the uh, climate of, of animosity in this country and Sarah Palin had a bullseye upon Tucson and all all this and blaming everybody in the world for it. I mean, it's just all about power grabs in this country. Okay, anything, anytime something happens, you can expect the political pundits from both sides to jump in and say, "Ah, oh, it's their fault. Oh, it's their fault." So you know that's that's what's going on. But it's not really Rush Limbaugh's fault. It's not Sarah Palin's fault. It's <laughs> it's not my fault. I don't think it's Alex Jones' fault. I don't think it's uh, Jesse Ventura's fault. I don't think anything like that had to do with it. There was something, something not right here because there was something not right here. Uh, the article says, in messages left on the internet before the shooting, Loeffner, 22, revealed himself to be a social outcast with paranoid, nihilistic beliefs and a fixation with grammar. One of the other things that came out about Jared Loeffner, one of the really disturbing and something that the news really didn't, you know, say much about that I think needs to be said. This was one of his favorite rock groups. A group called Slipknot. But when you like to have these clowns at your child's birthday party. Slipknot, of course, refers to the little knot that they put around a noose to, you know, so it can slide up and down so you can hang people. A lot of people want to say that rock and roll is a great thing for America and rock and roll this and rock and roll. And we worship these rock people. Jared Lee Loeffner was, was one, one of hundreds, maybe even thousands of young people that did nothing but fill their mind with this kind of music and this kind of atmosphere, this kind of spirit. He did nothing but fill his mind with this garbage. He didn't believe in God. He didn't attend Sunday school. He didn't carry around a little pocket New Testament. He listened to Slipknot. He listened to the message. He was influenced and driven by the music itself and the spirit behind this music. We go back uh, all the way into the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, and in, even into the last decade, and we can see numerous young people performing crimes. Columbine. These two young men who shot these students in Columbine were loaded. Their minds were loaded with this kind of music. Students, young people, blowing their brains out, killing themselves, suicide packs. Why? Because that's the music, that's the spirit and the environment that these young people lived in and live in today. We should not be surprised, people, that the music industry has created in this country this kind of atmosphere. You don't want to know who I blame? I blame Slipknot. I blame the powers that are behind this kind of music. And you know, in case, well, you know, looks can be deceiving. Let's look at some of their, um, their, some of their songs. One a oh, great song called Butcher's Hook. One called Gehenna. That's the Old Testament word for hell, by the way. Here's one called the Heretic Anthem. One called I Am Hated. One called Killers Are Quiet. Vendetta. Wait and Bleed. These were the songs that he listened to. This is what he knew. He didn't have in his mind Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. 
he had songs like this in his mind. One of Slipknot's albums is simply called Subliminal Verses. You see, I believe that Jared Loeffner, I believe he made contact with a spirit. I believe that, and I'll show you that. Look at this article. Gabrielle Gifford shooting. Jared Loeffner believed he could fly. A school friend of Jared Loeffner, the main suspect in the shooting of Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, has spoken out about his friend's obsessions with dreams, chaos, and government. I want you to notice the dreams part. Bruce Tierney, 22, was a school and college friend of Jared Loeffner, the man charged with shooting of Gabrielle Giffords. On the eve of the shooting, Loeffner rang Mr. Tierney and left a voicemail on his mobile phone saying, Hey man, it's Jared, me and you had good times, peace out later. Mr. Tierney said that when he had heard the news of the shooting, he immediately thought that Loeffner was the culprit. I wonder why. Mr. Tierney told Mother Jones Magazine that his friend became obsessed with dreams and kept a diary of his nighttime visions. He said Lofter was more interested in this world, his dream world in other words, than our reality. Mr. Tierney said, I saw his dream journal once. That's the golden piece of evidence. Listen to what his friend said. You want to know what goes on in Jared Lofter's mind? There's a dream journal that will tell you everything. He said that Lofter sometimes approached strangers and would say weird things. He would do it because he thought people were below him and he knew they wouldn't know what he was talking about. By the beginning of 2010, Lofter's imaginary world was taking precedence over his everyday life, Mr. Tierney said. He sort of drifted off, didn't really care about hanging out with friends. He'd be sleeping a lot. He figured out... He could fly. Loeffner, according to Mr. Tierney, told his friends, I'm so into it because I can create things and fly. I'm everything I'm not in this world. I think the reason he did it was mainly to just promote chaos. He wanted the media to freak out about this whole thing. He wanted exactly what's happening. He wants all of that. You see, the research I did in the Jared Lofter, see, I mean, he keeps mentioning dreams and the fact that he slept a lot. The fact that he figured out that he could fly and create things. A concept was introduced to me this week in researching Jared Loeffner. Something that I, I kind of knew about, but I didn't really know much about it. The more I knew about it, the more I realized that there's probably a lot more Jared Loeffners out there. Let me do this. We go to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 18. I have a video that we put out about a year ago, something like that, called The Forbidden Practices. If you don't have a copy of that video, you can't find it online, give us a call at our ministry. We'll send you a copy of that DVD. You need to get this. Because I talk about the things in there that God said in Deuteronomy 18 that you shouldn't do. Make your son or daughter pass through fire, use divination, observe of times, an enchanter or witch, or a charmer consulted with familiar spirits, or a wizard or necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Now, God doesn't just say, don't do this. And we go, why? He says, because I said so. God always has a really good reason why he doesn't want anybody involved in things like this because God knows God knows firsthand the spirits that are behind this he knows them he kicked them out of heaven these people don't play very well with others oh they start out real nice they start out all sweet and innocent and perfect I remember a book I read several years ago called Inside the New Age Nightmare a fellow by the name of Randall Bear but I think that was a pseudonym I think didn't want to give his real name and I think he's dead now Mysterious circumstances. He was inside the New Age movement. And it said, started out all great. Said he was he was uh, chanting and he was going into meditation and he was doing dreamings and astral projection and he started meeting these uh, these uh, spirit guides. I'm going to talk about them in a minute. These spirit guides and he said, oh, they were nice and friendly and they gave me soothing feelings and all this stuff. And he said, after a while, it started kind of turning dark. And then it got real bad. Then it got to where I had to go into these trances, but I didn't want to. And when I got there and I met these people, these entities, I've never felt anything more cold and more black in my life. That was his testimony. Bill Schnabel, and some of you have read his testimony. That's exactly what he said. And let me say, that it's the nature of all sin, and it's the nature of everything on the devil's side. He said, I mean, it starts out all candy and dreams and sweet and wonderful. And it goes bad very quickly. There's a reason why God said, stay away from this stuff. 
I know the spirits that are behind it. I kicked them out of heaven. They are not your friends. Jared Loeffner and his actions last weekend are evidence, good evidence, of why God said, No, don't do this. Jared Loeffner was a practitioner of something, and there's several names of it. Um, one's called conscious dreaming. Another word for it is lucid dreaming. There's a graphic here on the screen, a woman reading a book called Conscious Dreaming. She's obviously a newager. It's quite a big book. Now, this is not something that, you know, if you're really in the slipknot, this is what you're doing. Lots of people. A lot of people in the New Age, a lot of people outside of the New Age are practicing New Age concepts. This is part of the whole package that's moving into the Christian church right now, along with contemplative prayer, Lectio Divina. Going into this trance and hearing the God that's on the inside of you, that's what this is part of. This lucid dreaming idea has to do with, with you know, uh, 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 there was this idea called astral projection, where you go into a trance and you can, you know, do all these things, lucid dreaming or conscious dreaming is sort of described like this. And there's a Wikipedia article, we'll read it here in a little bit. But basically it says that, you know, if you've ever had one of these dreams, and I've had a dream, you know, where I would be dreaming and I would say, you know what, I, I think I'm dreaming here. You know, then you wake up and you go, well, that was weird, and you go back to sleep. Okay? Conscious dreaming or lucid dreaming says is that you can trigger the dream and that you can wake yourself up inside the dream and be aware that you're in the dream and know that you're in the dream and dreams have endless possibilities. You can then contr control, manipulate. You can do anything you want to inside this dream. This is being practiced all over the country, all over the world. It's part of a movie. There was a movie, and when I saw this, I thought, you know what, i got to see this movie. So I went and got the movie, watched it. Wow, are you ready for this? The World of Lucid Dreaming um, has to do with a movie that came out last year called Inception. Now, Inception, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Inception had to do with this idea of lucid dreaming where uh, you could actually go into a dream and manipulate the outcomes and do all kinds of things. And the, and the Inception part of it was, and I'm trying to break this down because it was a long, weird movie, but it had this idea that you could go into shared dreaming, you could go into somebody's dream, or you yourself could go into this deep, deep trance, and they had like three layers. Hmm. Three layers. It's like the three levels of Masonic ritual, the first three degrees. Once you got to the third layer of the dream, the deep, deep dream, you could plant a subliminal idea into your own mind, your own subconscious, or someone else's subconscious. And as DiCaprio is describing this in the dream, here is the symbol he wrote of how it works. Hmm, we have seen that one before. The Wikipedia article describes it like this. The wake-initiated lucid dream occurs when the sleeper enters REM sleep with unbroken self-awareness directly from the waking state. There are many techniques aimed at entering a wild, which is a wake-initiated lucid, uh, lucid dream. The key to these techniques is recognizing the hypnogogic stage, which is within the border of being awake and being asleep. If a person is successful in staying aware while this stage occurs, that person will eventually enter the dream state while being fully aware that it is a dream. There are key times when this state is best entered. While success at normal bedtime after having been awake all day is difficult, it is relatively easy after sleeping for three to seven hours or in the afternoon during a nap. Techniques for inducing wilds abound. Dreamers may count, envision themselves climbing or descending stairs, think about that one, chant to themselves, Lectio Divina, contemplative prayer, whispering prayers, oh Jesus, you're so great. That's, that's how you do it. Uh, chant to themselves, control their breathing, that's what breath prayers is all about, count their breaths to keep their thoughts from drifting, concentrate on relaxing their body from their toes to their head, or allow images to, fl allow images to flow through their mind's eye, that's the third eye, the pineal gland, and envision themselves jumping into the image to maintain concentration and keep their mind awake while still being calm enough to let their bodies sleep. In other words, Lucid dreaming, conscious dreaming, whatever you want to call it, it's an occult practice that involves stopping the logical part of your brain, 
the, like the male, remember we dealt with that in, that in that video called contemplative prayer. You need to get that, need to see that. And the creative side of our brain that's not supposed to be ruling over us. It's about opening up that and, and allowing. And see, really what that is, is it's a firewall. God built and designed into us, called our consciousness, sobriety, a firewall. Keeps all the bad stuff out. Keeps all the bad guys. It's, you can think of it as like the sheepfold that Jesus talked about. And the, he said the thief doesn't come in by the door because Jesus is the door. The thief comes in some other way. And the thief has only one purpose in the mind. And that is to steal and to destroy. And Jared Loeffner was a practitioner of this kind of activity. You remember back in the 70's a man by the name of Gary Wright who I found out when he wrote this song it was massively influenced by the Beatles who were then influenced by these gurus from, uh, from India and so on. Gary Wright wrote a song called Dreamweaver. You remember that? You know we go around singing these songs in the 70's and we don't get it. We look back now and we're going that's weird. Gary Wright, uh, Dreamweaver, I believe you can get me through the night. Dreamweaver, listen to what he says. I believe we can reach the morning light. Guess who that is? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, light, son of the morning? Lucid dreaming, conscious dreaming, uh, contemplative prayer, Lectio Divina, New Age meditation, channeling, they all, they, all have, they all have one goal in mind. One, one goal. And that is to meet the morning light. Lucifer. One website from a New Ager dealing with dream weaving, he calls it personal and planetary transformation with sound and sacred geometry. His article says the dream weaver blends music Alch music. Stop right. Stop right here. Music. Does music have an influence in activity? Activity like this? Yes. Slipknot, ACDC, you name it. Gary Wright's Dreamweaver. They all play a part. Remember, Lucifer is made up of tabrets and pipes. He knows music. So the Dreamweaver blends music. Alchemy. We know what alchemy is. It's the transmutation of lead into gold or humans into gods. Think of Genesis 3. Music, alchemy, and sacred geometry creating a healing multidimensional energy field and surrounding and surround sound healing environment with multiple personal and professional applications. Inside the Dreamweaver, you feel the musical vibrations pulsing throughout your body. These pulsations facilitate the natural release of neuropeptides and affect brainwave frequencies resulting in shifting states of consciousness. Stop right here. The music. We at Bethel Church sing out of those old hymn books. I love those old songs. Um, Nothing but the blood of Jesus, Amazing Grace, the old rugged cross, things like that. That's what we sing. Something happened 10, 20 years ago in the American church. They quit singing songs like that and they went to songs that were more harmonic. Songs that made you feel Songs that slowed the vibrations of your mind down. Songs that were acting as facilitators so that you would accept certain ideas and certain principles that were not taught out of the scriptures. I'm telling you folks, it's everywhere. Uh, one quickly moves into a deeply relaxed state which enhances the communication between mind, body, heart, and spirit. Notice that he mentioned four things. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, and high places. Facilitated sessions by trained facilitators support expanded awareness and personal transformation. Stop right here. The people that knew Jared Loeffner saw the transformation. Okay, saw the transformation. They said he was just a guy. He didn't. He wasn't political. He wasn't left wing. He wasn't right wing. He wasn't anything. He was just a guy. And all of a sudden, he transformed. 
Professional sound healing trainings are offered for those re resonating to the Dreamweaver vision and interested in integrating this technology into their profession professional practices. You hang on to that. The Dreamweaver, the ultimate vibrational healing sound environment experience. The Dreamweaver facilitates personal and spatial energetic balancing on all levels for deep relaxation, stress management, relief of physical and emotional pain, and transformation for health, business, and entertainment. It is full body surround sound system is a state of the art supporting an inner journey that rediscovers the bliss within. You know, it's an interesting word. It's because, you know, I've been watching V and, and Diana, the goddess, the, the queen of all the bees there on V. She controls everybody by giving them her bliss. You give people ecstasy and man, they're hooked. This is what we see going on in the New Age movement. This is what we see going on at rock and roll concerts. You give people a bliss and man, they'll follow you. And in the American church, and probably all over the world, but in the churches right now, I talked to somebody in uh, Australia this morning and they said, yeah, what you fellas are seeing over there in America, that's what's going on over here. It's everywhere. And you give these church members bliss, they'll follow you right off and down to the pit. That's what's going on. But it has to do with an altered state of conscious and while you're there you meet somebody. This guy mentioned earlier about uh, this is for business professionals. Here was a book I saw called Dream Weaving, The Secret to Overwhelming Your Business Competition. Anything that will give somebody in sales or business an edge. And I will tell you, according to Marilyn Ferguson, the New Age movement has moved into the business world. Most of the business leaders in this country are being led by spirit facilitators. Here is a children's book about dream weaving. And part of this book was a voice called to them, I am your dream guide, the lady of the rainbow. And oh, it sounds so wonderful that as a child you can you can have a you can experience this dream where you meet this wonderful little lady who's going to show you all these wonderful things. See our kids are being indoctrinated in this garbage. They see this this dream guide that's a that's a demon. That's a devil. These dream guides. A lot of the research I did this week on, on uh, this kind of dreaming, lucid dreaming, conscious dreaming. Basically, it's a meditative trance. It's another form of it, but it's the same thing. Is that once you get inside there, you meet an ascended master or a spirit guide or sometimes uh, an animal. Boy, think about that because devils, they're beasts. That's who they are. One of these that I found very, very interesting. I'm in Isaiah 34 for a reason. A dream demon called Lilith. You've probably heard that name before. There are Lilith movements all over the world. She is regarded in astrology. She is regarded in Wicca. She is regarded in the New Age movement. She is a dream demon. I, I, I'm pretty sure she's Mystery Babylon the Great or represented that way. But these spirit guides and these uh, dream guides are nothing more than a demon. So I want you to get this. Okay? Jared Loeffner is uh, having an escape from reality. He believes that he can fly. Remember the song Dreamweaver. Uh, he is leaving his body and he can teach himself. He, once he gets into this dream state, he teaches himself how to fly. He can create his own reality. And I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you, you know, life sometimes is all about escaping reality because we get into situations in life where, where it just seems like nothing's going on and, and there's always some way, you know, maybe go on vacation or maybe just sit on a book or whatever. Some people, they go too far and they start getting into all these practices when really you want to escape reality, just wait for some trumpets to sound. Amen? We're going to escape out of here one of these days in the, what's called the translation of the church uh, or death. The, the death is not something as a Christian that I fear because I know where I'm going. And I'll just wait for the Lord to bring it on one of these days. But Jared Loftner escaped reality, teaching himself dream weaving, teaching himself how to fly, teaching He felt like, and see, even his vocabulary changed. He was unintelligible. People couldn't understand him. He felt that he was above everything. He felt like he was a god. 
because he really, in his mind, he lived in a different place that was high above this world. And there is zero doubt in my mind that Jared had dream guides that were facilitating him. Devils, spirits, a demon called Lilith. In modern Luciferianism, this is from Wikipedia. In modern Luciferianism, Lilith is considered a consort. Watch this now. A consort of Lucifer. In other words, his girlfriend. And is identified with the figure of Babylon. She really does pour out drunkenness, doesn't she? She is said to come from the mud and dust. and is, That's because she's the spirit of this world. And is known as the queen of the succubi. You know what that is? It's a demon that has intercourse with you. When she and Lucifer mate, they form an androgynous being called Baphomet, or the goat of Mendes, also known in Luciferianism, as the god of witches. Imagine that. This name Lilith was interesting to me. Now, you won't find the word Lilith in the King James Bible. But, there is one occurrence, it's actually a Hebrew word, there's one occurrence of the word Lilith in the King James Bible, it's in Isaiah 34. Now, God prompted me to not just look at this one verse, and I looked at Isaiah 34 in general, because I, I want you to get this concept. Remember, here's the, here's the idea that I'm floating here, okay, I'm just kind of talking out loud here. I think, Jared, and I believe with all my heart that he was not part of a CIA, MK Ultra mind control program. Didn't have to be. Okay? I don't believe that he was hired as an assassin by the Obama administration to go after this federal judge and blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, does it serve an anti-gun agenda? Maybe. Okay? We'll see. But I really think that Jared Loeffner is like so many others, the product of what happens when good spirit, so-called good spirits turn bad. He was demon-possessed, people. You saw his picture, his mug shot, the day that he was arrested. No remorse. Nothing. But just this big, evil smile. He was possessed. See, I preached a message, and, and if you haven't seen this, I, I want to encourage you to get it, called Where Dragons Live. God showed me something from the Bible. It, I believe in dragons. I believe Lucifer is a dragon. I believe it's, it represents a spirit. And God knows the nature of all the animals that he created. And God knows that certain animals like to live in certain places. I want to get to that in a minute. Certain animals like to live in certain places. That's why I think we're in the place that you live, you ought to be careful about well, you know, what you're watching on TV, what, what, what Slipknot album you're listening to. Uh, things like that. The books that you... I, I think you ought to be careful. I don't think books are possessed. But I think, I think these spirit devils that are beasts in nature are comfortable living in certain places. You want to create an atmosphere for them to live in? Knock yourself out. But don't be surprised when it all turns bad one of these days. And I say, clean your house out, and on and on and on. But I found out, when I preached this message, God showed me that dragons, you know, the devils, spirits, things like that, they like to live in a place that's barren. They like to live in a place where there's not like a lot of people. That's what, when, when, when someone like Jared Loftner, you know what they, they see? They see, you know what, he starts distancing himself from human beings. So you think about it, okay? Dragons don't like to live where there's a lush green garden and lots of, I mean, a beautiful... They don't like to live in those places. They like to live in a barren wilderness. The barren wilderness of Jared Lofter's mind was the fact that there was no word in him. There was no Bible to train him. There was no Bible to lead him. There was no Holy Spirit to guide him. And so naturally, what happens... Was all the creatures move in. You know what happens to an abandoned house, don't you? I mean, the mice and the cockroaches and all these little vermin move in. Why? Because there's nobody there. That's what they like. See my point? Isaiah 34. Come near ye nations. I'm just going to read it. Get your Bible out and read it with me. Come, ye, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Think about, think about nations. Think about the world. Think about a person's life. 
and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and, and the mountains shall be melted with blood. Think of, think of ruin and destruction and, and decomposition and, and, uh, and, and corruption everywhere. Think about that. Uh, think about listening to Slipknot albums all day long. Verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their holes shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off the vine, and as the falling fig from a fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down from Idumea, and upon the people of my, of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and the blood of lambs and goats with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord is, hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them, um, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. He's talking about a, a, a murderous spirit that exists. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Don't you remember this idea of the, the recompense, the vengeance? The streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land shall, uh, shall become burning pitch. Think about Jared Lofner's life now. Okay? It shall not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation, and it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever. Now, no, no, it's, notice this. He says, now that this land of, of, of Jared Lofter's life has become a, a wasteland full of carnage and destruction, now that, these, now that this has happened, watch this. But the cormorant and the bittern shall pass it. The owl shall possess it. Excuse me. Now, I want you to think about this. He's mentioning cormorants and bitterns. He's, mentioning, he's going to mention animals that fly with wings. These are representations. Babylon in Revelation was the hold of every bird. Okay? Spirits with wings. That's what you get out of this. The cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven. And the owls and ravens, they love, they love carnal things. Okay, They love meat. Shall dwell in it and shall stretch. And he shall stretch out upon you the line of confusion. That's how he was. And the stones of emptiness. That's his life. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns, you know what thorns is? That's sinfulness in a person's life. Thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. Now notice this. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, and the screech owl... Here in the Hebrew, and I don't know much Hebrew, but I know this one. Here in the Hebrew is the word Lilith. This demon of dreams, this spirit guide that you meet in the dream world. Here is a screech owl. And I believe this translation is right. Also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you. I think God, instead of using the word Lilith here, God is God is going to show us something. He's going to teach us something here. Remember uh, what was when was it? Uh, a movie came out uh, called Fourth Kind. It was supposed to be like a continuation of like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and here and, and it was Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind or the Fourth Kind, where instead of you know meeting the aliens coming out of the spaceship, the fourth kind of meeting aliens was much more dark and more sinister than that. The aliens were going into the mind and taking control. And if you watch this movie, there is a repetition of 3 and 33 and 333 in this movie. And I'm going, I get that. The number 4 referencing um, the spiritual realm. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But this psychiatrist was hypnotizing these people who'd had these episodes and all of them started out saying I was awakened I was awakened and I looked outside and there was an owl standing there as you watch the movie you later see that this owl was just the outward image of a very very evil spirit that caused people to commit senseless murders 
I think I think God using these words in our Bible, it's not a mistake. God wants us to know that spirit of that screech owl, Lilith, the demon dream guide, Babylon herself, that's ruling through the nightmares of people's minds. Washington, D.C. I mean, that looks like where the capital is. You know, and you have this statue of a goddess. That's what that looks like. What about the Bohemian Grove? I think the spirit of that of the owl, the screech owl, Lilith. Remember, they move in where there ain't no people. They move in places where there is a wilderness, an emptiness, a wasteland. Think about Jared Loftner and others like him whose lives, whose life is just a wasteland. Loftner came in contact with familiar spirits. God had warned us about that. Leviticus 19.31 Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 20 And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards, to go a whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. That's what everybody was saying about Lofner, was that he just seemed like he didn't belong to anybody else. He was cut off, even from his own parents. Deuteronomy 18, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. God said in Isaiah 19, The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over to the hand of a cruel Lord. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. You see, I'm telling you, what has happened in this country is that we have abandoned the true, the pure, the good words of God. And we have traded them in for the little fantasy worlds that is being led by the familiar spirits. Not just the dream world of Jared Loftner with his, with his um, awakening dreams or his conscious dreams, but any of these fantasy worlds that people are getting into. Second life. Second life is where you can go online, create an avatar for yourself. Boy, there's a word right there, half human, half God. You can create an avatar for yourself and you can live in this little fantasy world where you can fly, you can have sex with whoever you want to, you can be a man, woman, you can be whatever you want to be. And people are spending their lives inside the fantasy worlds where the screech owls live. Dungeons and Dragons, fantasy role-playing games, even Sims games where you live in this little fantasy world stay away from them get you want listen if you if you want to blow your mind with stuff read this bible it'll people we have we have lost the spirit of god in this country and in our culture and we have invited the familiar spirits in and i'm telling you that jared lofner is just one of a million and a half people in this country maybe even more, probably a lot more, that are all headed down the wrong road because they have no word. They have no spirit in their life. All they have is a habitation of devils. Even Jude, in describing the events of the last days, including the false prophets and, the, and all the bad people, he calls them filthy dreamers. That's who Lofner was. And he defiled his flesh. He despised dominion. He was very anti-government. Speak evil of dignities. And here he was, last Saturday, as a dignity, a dignitary was speaking. Shot her, tried to kill her. Killed all these people. I think this Bible's right. I think it's right 100% of the time. I'm just going to throw in here very quickly the, the symbolism behind this. And there was, and it's not because it was going to bring in a new world order or because he was CIA mind controlled or he was a mason. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that spirits just like certain places. The Safeway store, right on Highway 77. Go, remember, the Lord's vengeance. Go read, go read Genesis chapter 3, the number 77 associated with vengeance. 
right on Highway 77. Notice the logo for Safeway. Safeway is one of those companies that's changing their logo. The yin and the yang, the, the fusion of opposites together, the movie Inception, that's what it was all about. It was about planting a seed and, and, and having an idea planted in someone's mind that came to full-blown fruition. It's all pointing to the birth and the coming of a new world order and the birth and coming of the Antichrist, the cruel Lord that God promised would come when the nation was turned over to familiar spirits. Let me read this and I'll be done. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Notice the verse after that. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. There are a lot more Jared Lofners out there. There are, there are, are untold number of teenagers that are blowing their minds to mush with the occult practices, the music, the Harry Potter books, the Twilight stories, you name it. And, we, and the Bible speaks this to our shame. Because we know, we're the ones that know that communi evil communications corrupt good manners. As watchmen on the wall, we need to do a better job, I think, of sounding the alarm, even at the expense of our own personal dignity, or we're afraid that people are going to think we're wackos. You know what? Let's just shine the light of truth in this world. Yeah, I, I, I've, made it, I've made a deal with, with all the watchers out there, all the people out there that watch our videos and things like that. If you, ever, if you ever want to distribute any of our videos and you can't copy them yourselves, you call us, you tell us how many copies you want, and we'll send them to you. We are committed to sending the truth, the messages that we have sent forth out of here, we are committed to that. And if you don't want to do that, then send emails. You send emails to everybody in your email list saying, if you love Jesus, pass this on to 10 people. Hey, send them. And if you don't like this broadcast, give them another one. But send people the truth. Let's awake to righteousness. And let's not be ashamed of who we are and what we believe because we have the truth of the Word of God that's keeping the dragons from moving in. It's what we have. This is Pastor Mike. I love you. Pray for those families. Pray for Jared Loeffner that he could be reached and his soul could be saved for Jesus Christ if it's not too late. God bless you. Bye-bye.